Hello friends, do you have a lot of these chargers, old chargers and transformers in your home lying around or maybe inside a box full of other junk because you haven't decided yet if to throw them away or not? Well don't throw them away, there are many things we can do with these transformers. In this video I'm going to show you how we can recycle these chargers to light up some spaces in our home and at the same time save some bucks. We're going to build a modern looking lamp for the living room, for the countertop or our kitchen, for the bathroom mirror or for our workshop. To lower our costs we're going to use some recycled materials but the lead strips we're going to have to buy them. Materials. First an old aluminum track for a sliding curtain. We also need a lead strip with double sided CM tape which might cost from $5 to $20. We might also need some adhesive or silicone for sticking some things and some brackets to fix the track to a wall or cabinet. Which lead strip should we buy? To answer this question we have to examine some details about LEDs and chargers and calculate a pair of values. Carrying capacity of a transformer or charger. Can we use any lead strip with the chargers we have? Regretfully, we can't. The chargers of cell phones, laptops and other appliances can have very different features. And these features define what we can do with them. We must write down the specs of the charger where it says output on the label. That is the voltage and amps the charger delivers. As we can see in this table, there is a variety of chargers and some voltages can't be used with LEDs unless we buck or boost. Voltage. The charger's voltage must be the same voltage as the LEDs. If we use a 19 volt charger to power a 12 volt LED, the LED's diodes will heat up and melt, cause a fire or damage the charger. The permanent voltage shouldn't exceed 5% over its rating. If we use a 19 volt charger to power a 24 volt LED, no damage will occur, but the diodes won't light up, they'll flicker or remain dull. Also, we can't use a dimmer to reduce the voltage. The dimmer and diodes can burn. To reduce the charger's voltage from 19 to 12 volts, we must use a buck converter which will increase the cost of our lamp. However, this can give us three times more strip length at 12 volts with a 4 amps charger. In this table, the first three columns have the features of some chargers, and in the other columns, the maximum length of different lead strips allowed by these features. Here we can see that recycled chargers from cell phones and laptops are quite limited. We can't use them to light a large space, except as a decorative add-on or supplemental to existing lighting. In most cases, they don't deliver much light. They are more useful in the kitchen, workshop and bathroom, as I'll show you later. However, if you have a 20 volt charger with over 4 amps, that's a different story. But these chargers are rare. Here is the mass I used so you can calculate the strip lengths for your chargers. Power of the charger. Most chargers don't say how many watts they consume and we must calculate this using the following formula. Power in watts equals voltage multiplied by current in amps. The outgoing watts of the charger is our light bill growing and it gives us an idea of the brightness of the lights. Carrying capacity of a charger. The most limiting factor of a charger is its current or amps. The amps of a charger must be equal or larger than the amount demanded by the strip of LEDs. And the longer the strip, the more amps it will demand. To calculate the maximum length of LEDs a charger can handle, we use the following formula. Charger power output divided by LEDs power per meter. That equals 
the meters of strip we can use. If we use a longer strip, more amps, than the charger's output, the charger will overheat and burn. In fact, it is recommended to only use 80% of the output length of strip we have calculated to avoid overheating. Now that we know which lead strips are appropriate for our chargers, let's see how we assemble our lamp of LEDs. Support for the lead strip. The first thing we need is a support for our strip. An aluminum support will let us fix the strip to the wall, change the angles, and it's very useful also as a heat sink to absorb the heat of the diodes. An old aluminum track for a sliding curtain is a very good option, although any aluminum form will work. Option one, at the bottom of the track. If we stick the strip of leads at the bottom of the track, we need to fill in that space with aluminum or with silicone to ensure a good addition of the strip. This option delivers a narrow ray of light, so if we fix the track to the wall, much of the room will end up in the dark. So it's a good idea to cut off these edges to get a bit more light. This kind of assembly would be much more useful under cabinets to light work surfaces like in a kitchen or workshop or even on the bathroom mirror where we can put many tracks one after the other. If the area is under much humidity, we recommend calling a registered electrician to make sure it's safely installed. Beware, if we drill through the aluminum or cut it, we must remove all burrs and shavings before sticking the strip to avoid any chance of short-circuiting the diodes. Option 2. On the outer wall. This is a more simple solution and will deliver more light. Option 3. Removing a wall. A better option, maybe, is cutting a wall off the track and sticking the strip on the other wall. In this way we can point the light in a direction without losing so much brightness. In this case we must remove all burrs after cutting the track so we avoid damaging the strip. This support for the strip of LEDs gives us a wide array of light covering a wider area. Cutting and sticking the strip of leads. Now that our track is ready, we cut the strip of leads to the right size and stick it to the track. Wait, you can't cut these strips in any place. They have special cutting points clearly marked along the strip. In this case, every three diodes. And we must cut them right in the middle so we don't remove the copper contacts. If this is an old curtain track, make sure it's clean and dry. Then we start sticking it on in the part where we cut it, removing the blue protecting plastic. We slowly stick it along all the track. Connecting the strip to the charger. Isn't it just joining the wires? No. If we plug a lamp in this way, it lights. And if we turn it around and plug it the other way, it also lights. But with lead strips, it's not like this. Polarity is important. Along the strips of LEDs, the electric current just travels one way. If we connect positive with positive, the current goes in along here, turns around and comes out here. 
But if we connect the positive to the negative, no current goes in and nothing happens. We might even damage the diodes. For this reason, the strips are marked with plus and minus signs. So we need to know which wire of our charger is the positive and which is the negative. There are two simple ways of doing this. If the wire is one wire red and the other one black, the red one will always be the positive. If they're both wires are black, then you have to look for these marks, white lines all along the positive wire. That's the positive wire. Now, if there are no marks on the wire, then we will have to measure the volts with a voltmeter. If the voltmeter says it's negative, then that's the negative wire. If it says it's positive, that's the positive wire. The voltage that comes out of a transformer or charger can be up to 20% of its rated voltage. However, once we connect it to an appliance, that voltage should fall to a level near its nominal voltage. That higher voltage is known as no load voltage, and the diodes of a lead are designed to tolerate those voltages. According to ChatGBT, a 12 volt lead strip should work correctly between 12 and 14 volts, but its life expectancy can suffer at the higher end. According to lead salesmen, I must buy a lead transformer, the one they sell. So, we connect the wires. We solder them together to ensure a good connection. We cover the joint with heat shrink tubes and we seal the joint with a lighter. When we buy a strip of leads, they come with the ends already soldered to wires so we can easily connect it to the power source. But when we cut the strip, the rest of the strip will have no wires attached. We have to solder them. The first thing we have to do is cut and remove the silicone that covers the copper contacts. Then, with a fine sandpaper, we remove any residues and apply some flux to each contact and the wires. We tin the wires one at a time. We place them on the contacts and we carefully heat the wires till the solder melts. Then we cover the end of the strip with a heat shrink tube and seal the wires. Connecting the charger to the electric outlet. No, it's not a joke. Of course, we can plug it in, get some light, plug it out, but then we have a few issues. We have to hang it up somewhere so it gets out of the way of, of our work. But still we have these wires dangling about that will also get in the way of our work. No. And additionally, if we keep on plugging in and out and in and out and so on, eventually we will damage the transformer or the outlet. So the best thing we can do, what we should do, is put a switch. A switch between the lights and the outlet. But we shouldn't put the switch between the transformer and the lights because these transformers keep on working consuming watts even if we aren't using them. That's the standby consumption. So the, what we should do is put a switch between the outlet and the transformer. How do we do this? Our best option is a switch and outlet combination. There we have the transformer on the outlet and the switch receives electricity, the hot wire, directly from another outlet. And it goes to the open side of the switch so that there's no electricity received by the transformer until we click on the switch. Fix the track to a wall. Now that we have our lamp ready with all its wiring, we have to fix it to the wall or under a cabinet. And for that we have different options. Unmovable lamp. If we install the track like this, stuck to the wall, we'll have a ray of light going straight out like this, and as we saw, not very wide. This method is better for indirect and decorative lighting. A dimly lit ambience 
for meetings with friends or watching TV. Pivoting lamp. If we want to shine the light on the table, sofa or book we are reading, we must add another L bracket fixed with bolts. So they act like hinges and we can fix the best position. And preferably with a half track so we have more light. Brightness. The material I used in this video is a 50-50 lead strip, 12 volts, 60 dials per meter, cold light, 14.4 watts per meter and a thousand lumen per meter. A 12 volt 1 amp charger for 236 centimeter long strips for the bathroom mirror. A 12 volt 2 amp charger for an 83 centimeter long strip for the kitchen living room works. In these places I achieved quite good brightness with these setups. In the bathroom, the 1 amp charger allows for 236 centimeter strips positioned vertically as a supplement for the bulb. This has made my wrinkles disappear. In the kitchen, the 2 amp charger would allow for 60 centimeter extension if needed. In the living room, even if I use the 5 feet the 2 amp charger allows, it wouldn't be enough light to read a book, but it's enough for other activities. How can we increase this amount of light? To increase brightness, we need another kind of LED, one with more diodes per meter, 120 to 40 or 320 diodes, with 20 to 30 watts per meter, Cold light, a 24 volts charger instead of 12 volts, or a cob strip. These are the features that deliver more brightness. In summary, can we light up parts of our home using cell phone and notebook chargers? Yes. I had the best results using 12 volt chargers and 2 amps. However, we can get even better results using 24 volt chargers or 4 amp chargers converted to 12 volts. Additionally, we must use cold light LED strips and the highest amount of diodes per beat. I hope you like this video and you are leaving enlightened. If that's true, please enlighten me with your thumbs up, a subscription, a share, your comments. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.